So as we're live, welcome to this live edition of the Scottish Football Show right here on SM Media. I'm Scott McPike. Shankers is with me as always. A pleasure to be on again, Shankers. Uh, pleasure's all mine. Brilliant. We're all joined by a very special guest. You having a night now, Scott? <laughs> Right, we've made a wee mess of this straight away. We've made this mess of this straight away, but we'll we'll start again. We'll take it for here. We're live. Dino, Dean Keenan's here. We've been trying to get Dean Keenan on for ages, but we finally got him. Dean, how are we doing? Thanks very much for joining us. No worries. Good to be here, Scott. I am. I'm good, mate. I'm good. Good to get us on. Um, turn and throwing a wee while, so it's good to get on. What's happening? You've been busy. Busy, aye. Working away, mate. Um, we've not really stopped through through this um whole lockdown, etc. So I. All good. Brilliant. Uh, we'll just touch on a few things before we, we get into some questions. We'll we'll take a wee start. We've just heard the Celtic team and the Livingston team have both come through. So we're just going to run through the Livingston team. We have McCrory in goal, Brown, Guthrie, Fitzwater, Lawson, Serraro, McMillan, Pittman, Forrest, J. Emmanuel, Thomas and Jack Hamilton start for Livingston. The Celtic team, we will just get that up there now. We have Barkas, Duffy, Beaton, Ayer, Sorrow, Turnbull, Christie, Elianusi, McGregor and Griffiths. Do you know which think of the team, the Celtic team? Are you surprised at some of the additions to that? Um, not really. I thought it was always going to change it after the last few games. Um, aye, it's just Duffy and Beaton at the back. I want to be, I want to be convinced with that still. Um, I don't know if he'll play a four. I'm, I'm pleased to see Taylor back in um, I still don't think maybe Taylor's the answer, but I, I think defensively he's a bit much better option than what Laxell is. Um, so I, it'll be a tough game tonight. But the sounds of the Livingston, like, Livingston team might give me a few changes as well. I think they've got the cup semi final this weekend, so they're yeah. a bit better than that. Yeah. Sh- uh, Shankers, how big a buzz is it to get Dino on? Um, aye, aye, I've been, especially the way the situation is now and, and all things. and life and, and football it's good to get him on but a we, character well, is, is what always comes up when you mention the name Dean Keenan I think it's a good match <laughs> we're taking questions as well if you want to ask anything to the boys me Shankers or Dino about Dino's career then please just fill it out in the wee live chat on the right hand side we'll take any questions that are going we've got a few questions from Twitter Dino just obviously straight away we're just going to go for the jugular straight away here Right. Well, I've got a question for Kerry Mack, 23. Mm-hmm. Asked, you know, why, what he flung in the cow shed at Capilo? You need to tell us that story. Um, aye, it's a, it's a, there was nothing actually flung in the cow shed at Capilo. There was a long time <laughs> in that. There was an operation that um, happened maybe 10, 15 years ago, maybe about 20 years ago now, and there was something, something removed for somewhere, and the story goes that that get flung into the cow shed at Capolo. Um, but I can't really get into too much <laughs> the details as to what that was, unfortunately. Um, but no, that was a good question for Kiri, and it's one that always it always brings a smile on my face. Eh? Scotty McLaughlin as well. Gets a happy birthday to Scotty McLaughlin as well, just before we go any further, obviously. But uh, he asks a few questions as always, but some of them, you, uh, you just don't understand some of them. You need to Asked before he asked him what, what he's talking about, but he has asked, ask, ask Dean about the free wheel challenge. Oh, that was brilliant, man. It was a member at Morton. Um, by the way, I might have known that Kiri and Scotty would be the first two of my questions <laughs> <laughs> when, when we were at Morton. Um, we used to drive into this wee br- bridge of weir, and when I mean, you come through Colm McComb, and just before you get into the training ground at Quarriers Village, there was this big hill that you would go down before you would get to the, a bit of an incline through a wee bridge bit and that. Um, so we decided that we, whoever was travelling with us, I think it was me, Scotty, Beanie, Ian Russell and Kiri Mack who were travelling and Jim McAllister, there was a few others, I think Brian Harvey, we all got involved in it. That So when you got to the top of this hill, you were to put your gear into neutral so you were only allowed to accelerate. You just had to let the flow take you all the way down and obviously we would see who got the furthest up this country road or through the back roads but I saw it was see thinking back it was crazy it was petrifying to see you <laughs> in the back yeah because at one point you would turn 
corner Scott and you would go over this kind of wee bridge over water and that anything could have happened but I daft boys back in the time thinking it was funny and it was funny it was funny at the time but um, the, I, there's some of the best characters you've met in football like just some of the guys you'll never forget just how bonkers they were um, there's loads tunnels to be fair I don't know if it was just me that surrounded myself by them as well but <laughs> Scott, Scotty was brilliant Scotty was always good good laugh and Michael Gardine Mitch was absolutely mm-hmm. mental Um so I, I, I tend to go on with a lot of these guys, you know what I mean? Um, I just think, I, I just loved having a carry on and I, all these guys, Midge, Scotty, um, and even less of it, Alec Walker, boy Alec Walker, we were at Morton, he was, he was back crazy as well. It was, I, there's just loads of good characters and I'm fortunate enough to have met all these guys and I, Mark Roberts, I suppose, I better say Marco as well, he was another one. He was a character. But Andy McLaren as well, Andy McLaren, I've got to give Andy a mention because I didn't know how to take Andy and I used to say to Scotty, I'm not fucking sure on Andy, I, I, I don't know about him and Scotty was like, that's just the way Andy is and now when I see that, he, he absolutely was but I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't take it, I couldn't take it um, at that age so I, Andy was brilliant, he was superb. Carl McPike, send me a question, what do, what do Shankers and Dino think the Celtic score will be tonight and who would win a drop ball between Shankers and Dino? It's a no-brainer, that's Dino all day long. Again, <laughs> as a Scott rule challenge. <laughs> I think Celtic will win the night um, comfortably against Livingston. Do you think they will, though? The do you think Livingston will win? 2-0. I think Livingston, Livingston know they're safe in the, the division. Livingston don't need to go and win this game tonight. They've got... I know it's the old cliche saying but we focus on one game at a time and that, but Livy Snow have all eyes in the weekend. What a chance it is for them to go into a national final and, and go and win it. They're, they're just as good as any of the, the other uh, three teams that's, that's in the semi-final. What a chance it is to go and win that, I think. Livy Snow know they're safe in the division, so I think they'll be they'll be looking to get into the final and, and going and win that League Cup. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Mark Haldy sent a question in on Twitter for Dino. Pick a five-a-side team from the best players you played with alongside at your spell at air. Spell at air? Um, I'll throw that to Shankers as well, because I think that's a great question. I've got a, uh, probably Ryan, Ryan Stevenson had been there. Um, Steve was brilliant. And when, he came here, when, I, when I came here, he was actually on his way back down the way for St Johnston and Chelsea to St Johnston and then at air. And he was all talking about being a hometown boy and being comfortable there, but he absolutely walked his backside off to get back up the way and Aye, uh, so Steve would be in it. Um, Goalie-wise, well, I'd have to include Big Jay because he could play outfield as well, Stevie Grinley. He was phenomenal. Um, I suppose defender, uh, Big, I wouldn't have Bobo, I wouldn't have Bobo in my five-a-side team. <laughs> five-a-side team, no chance. No. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a difficult one. I'd, I, def, Alan Trouton, he, he, he would need to be in it. Um, what a footballer, man. He was amazing. And, so I've got that. I've got a goalie. I've got Shea. Am I including myself in this? No. Uh, no. No. I'll go with Shea. I'll go with Shea. Stevie Grinley, Alan Trouton, Ryan Stevenson, um, Mark Roberts. I'll go with him. Um, I need a defender. I need somebody that's just going to get about the pitch and run about and smash any folk and that. So I'll go for Donzo. <laughs> I'll be Donnelly, aye, my darts partner. I'll go with Donzo, my darts partner. Me and Bobby Donnelly were playing darts for about a season, I think, instead of playing games. Or I could get, I could go with Kev James and just get him to lie down in front of the goal and maybe they would score. But aye, they're, they're, they're the best players. Um, Chris Aitken, I need, I need to put Chris Aitken as well, because he's, Tiff was brilliant, what a captain he was for me at air as well. Yeah. Um, I don't think he was appreciated as much for the fans. It was an underrated air team, that one. It was... Nobody really talks about them. How good they were. We were. I think that when when I went there, they were struggling. Do you know what I mean? They were heading yeah. to the top division, and when I went there on loan, but the season that I signed, we, Reedy recruited well. And I, everyone that's come on and spoke about Reedy, his recruitment's always been spot on. Um, he even knows how to get rid of players as well, like Shankers. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it has. It, it, it recruited really well, and with a good bunch of there again, with a really really good bunch of boys and. We've we done, we done, done well. I'd, I'd like to think that that team that we had at Erlen would be challenging top, top of the championship. Aye, definitely. Shankers, a couple of questions in for you. 
With the two-year anniversary of beating the United, the Scottish Cup, do you still get goosebump about the game like old Talbot supporters? Uh, I don't get goosebump, so it wouldn't go as far as that. Uh, but it's always a good memory to look back on. Like that's one of the benefits of social media and things like that. That it, it brings back memories like that that you can you can look back and. Uh, and obviously, I'm I'm gonna be a, be a dad soon, so we, you, oh, you can uh, post, you can uh, see the, those posts, and uh, and and gives you a good reminder of, of something special. I suppose that that was how the best way to describe it, it was a special day. I mean, uh, Brian Graham asked asked Dean about his goals at Winton. Goals at Winton. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Did I score it? He scored. He scored. He scored. Doing it, wasn't he? Did I? Um, no idea. To be honest, mate. No idea. I don't know. Brian, Brian, if you want to come and follow, sorry, mate, Brian. And jog on memory, then please do. Because well, hey, let's get let's get to the the talking point over the week. Neil Lennon and Monday come back for his ten day isolation, and let's just say an eventful press conference. Shankers, what do we think? Yeah, what do we? What's the uh, takeaways for that? To, to be honest, I've only seen small clips here. I've not seen the full press conference. Uh, I've just seen clips here. Um, I think it's hard. You, it's, it's not something you really see somebody coming out and being as brutally honest as that. So you've got to admire them in, uh, in some parts, but then some of the things you were saying as well, I, I think was a bit silly. I, I think when you see... Peter Lowell's uh, apology and then Lennon comes out and says that it's as if they're no in the same path or no like as if they're it's totally opposite no totally opposite things but they're kind of at different ends of the ends of the scale Lowell's apologising for for the trip etc and then Lennon's coming out and, and defending it I just it's strange it's as if they it's as if they, but nobody knew that that's what he was going to say in the press conference see how they have your media managers or whatever that that uh, that kind of warn them what questions are coming on. That's as if nobody knew anything. It's as if he just went in there and just, just went for it, basically. <laughs> Dino, you're very vocal on Twitter about your, your passion for Celtic, but what was going through your head on Monday when you saw that press conference? It's a hard one. Um, I've got to be honest, because like Neil Lennon, he, on the pitch, it's not been anywhere near good enough. So obviously there's a f- underlying frustration with that. Um but in terms of what he was saying, there was, like, if you can take that in isolation, I think there was a lot of, a lot of truths in what he was saying. Um, with the Scottish government letting them travel, and then was it the Saturday when they were going to lock down the country and the Monday, and then when he comes back, um, Andy Walker as if he's some sort of spokesman for the Celtic support. Do you know what I mean? It couldn't be further from the truth. Um, so I understand, and it, I've got to laugh with the. the on Twitter about Lemmy about don't that back down double down and, and <laughs> I, I must admit there was there was that there was that aspect of it Scott but I think when your back's against the wall and you're getting battered for the post he's maybe just trying to stand up for a wee bit um, so I can understand where he's coming from with it but at the end of the day and it's hard because he's got a lot of criticism for Celtic supporters for all this stuff as well and see, to be honest with you, see if Celtic were 10 points clear in the league, the criticism wouldn't be anywhere near as bad as what it was for going to Dubai. The criticism comes with the fact that Celtic only done well enough. Um, so I do have a wee bit of sympathy, but at the end of the day, when, like I say, when you're going for 10 in a row and your performance is as abject as what Celtic are, then you're going to get criticism. Michael gardine has been, been on to the Twitter page and brought in a really good question. Ask Dean Keenan who pissed in the soup. <laughs> Oh man, that soup, that soup at Morton. We used to um, get soup brought up. So Andy, the, Andy Bryant would bring soup up in the morning, the kit man, and he would put it on um, in the kitchen. Obviously, when we would go and train, and when we come back, we would get soup in that. But sometimes, if there was boys injured, or sometimes you would just finish training and jog up to get to, to make sure that you got to the soup first. There was everything was put in that soup at times, man. The boy Alec Walker I was talking about earlier. I remember. I remember. Everything was getting put in the soup at one point, salt and sugar and like, I don't know, I can't remember pissing in the soup to be honest, but there's a funny story about that also. Alan Trout was my best man and he told that in his speech at my wedding as being my best man that I pissed in the soup. So I, it wasn't the one that went down It wasn't the one that went that well, the other side of the family. Maybe they take the starters at the, at the dinner then? Uh, well, you would come up for training and then you would get 
would get the heat nod as if to say, I don't bother drinking soup today, the there's been something put in there. So. <laughs> uh, but great times, like I say, that that feel like Wimbledon in that club, man. It was crazy, gang. Uh, Tam McManus, who is somebody I'd quite like to get in the sit down, actually. Ask Dean if he always pissed the new signings in the shower, or was that just me who had the privilege at United? <laughs> Again, Tam told that story at one of his sportsman's dinners. He was doing an after dinner speech. I heard him <laughs> speaking about that as well. Um, Okay, it's just what you do, isn't it? When you're in the shower with the boys after a game, you're having a wee piss, a wee bit on his leg in that one, do any harm? I was, I done it with Stevie Wilson once at Talbot, and I didn't realise he was sitting with his phones down, catching it on, and then he <laughs> chucked it on my face. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's horrible, isn't it? But, aye. A wee bit of urine on his leg, I'm not doing any harm. He's in the shower anyway. <laughs> If you've got a question, please please write it in in the YouTube stream and we'll answer it. The boys as long as it doesn't it. revolve around pissing, please. Aye, I think we'll probably make that <laughs> for now, please. And we've got just about a few questions, obviously. I want to get Shanker's thoughts as well. We spoke about this earlier in the chat, Shanker's. David Martindale was up, up for his fit and proper person test today. Where do you start here? Because it's just a it's just a shame that, that, that we're talking about people getting... Like the, the land of second chances, we call it, and that that's he's David Martin deals through this sort of thing. It's kind of a good, it kind of be good for him before a game as well. But it'd be an absolute travesty if anything was to come of this. It's it's stupid. Uh, it, that's probably the only way to describe it. It's almost like saying if, if you you can't have a past. Really, there's loads of people we have had issues and problems in the past, and in all walks of life, it's just because you're in the. The limelight, like he's he's doing so well at Livingston. The now he's been there for two months. He's been involved with Livingston for years. So so why has this not come up years ago? Why why now? Because he's doing so well and he's he's uh, in the press and the papers are getting spoken about. Why why I, I, I just really don't get it. The man's uh, the man's turned his his life around almost, and and now he's gonna it kind of brought up. And I can't believe there's even a. I think about it to, to decide what happens with him. It, it, it's a joke, to be honest. Did you you can think about it as well? Surely it's up to his employers to think if he's fitting properly, you know what I mean? Um, and he's been, like Chankers just said, he's been there for many, many years now. Um, yeah. It's almost as if, Scott, that he's one manager of the month and somebody sitting in an office in Hamden sees the name David Martindale. Oh, I don't know that name. I'll search David Martindale. Searches David Martindale on this article comes up. Yeah, no, I can't have mm-hmm. that. I mean, all these dinosaurs at Hamden. It's nonsense. Like, the guy's turned his life around and he's manager of the month in the Scottish Premier League and he deserves every single bit of credit that he's getting. Definitely. I can agree with that. We'll, we'll touch on a bit about Troon as well, Dean. Like, what's how, how good are you enjoying like, being the assistant manager there and which are, which are kind of plans for the future with him? I'm loving it. I'm loving it, to be honest. Um, over the last year or so, I mean, Doing it, um, it's been brilliant. I love the coaching aspect of it, and uh, it's been it's been great. It's been terrific. Um, I think, like in terms of aspirations and what what I do going forward, I think to be honest, my football, my professional career, can I get curtailed with my my knee injury? And yeah, there was a bit. Of, um, there was a bit of me that I don't regret it, but I never really got to finish on my terms in terms of my senior career. Certainly, but I, I would love to manage it whatever level I'm possible of doing it. Like, I love football. Football is everything to me, do you know what I mean? I'm engrossed in the game. There's no night that I don't sit in the house and watch some sort of football. And I have just got a real passion for it. And I've enjoyed trying to put that on to my, the players at Trun and that. And the boys at Trun have been absolutely phenomenal. Because um, I was a bit worried at the start between going, obviously being a bit of a jack of lad and a joker and that, and then having to have that serious side of it. But... So far, it's been fine. I've been coping well with it. Um, but it's been really enjoyable. Really, really enjoyable. You can't beat playing football, I think. Playing's the best feeling that you can ever experience. But I know that I'm 35 now and I know that I've got to start thinking of further. Who's, who's some of the good characters in there? I just uh, Obviously, Marco and Ryan Stevenson's there as well. Who's some of the good characters in that dressing room? Definitely know they two. Definitely know they two anyway. Um, the characters in the Troon team we've, we've got a few we've got a few Rockets as well Jordan Morton's an absolute maniac he's um, he was at Hearts a boy and went to play in Bulgaria and that Jordan he's a great player but he's a, a bit of a maniac um, in a good way though the best way um, and Scott Chatham he's been there for 
50 year, I think he's still. <laughs> he's um he's mental as well. Really good lad. But no, there's a really good bunch there. Um I got on well with a lot of the boys at Trun and I think that that's why I've stayed there for so long to be honest, Scott. Yeah, brilliant. We've got a question as well for Kieran Mack and Espy. I don't it's not so much a question. Cannot believe I never got a mention. Yeah. Kieran I thought he did get a mention in his days at his days at Morton. I don't know. Mentioned. But you never you need to make it specific for Kieran and tell Kieran it's <laughs> Kieran's mention for Kieran. You know I mean? <laughs> did get a mention. He just wanted to talk. Oh, sorry. He just wanted to talk about Trudner. Uh, what what's your overall thoughts and like for going for the juniors to the to the pyramid system to make up tier six. Uh, I know it's no no go off in the best of terms, but overall, do you think that's a, a good move for uh, for the juniors? Is I know everybody keeps referring to it as the juniors, but I know it's really no anymore. But do you think that's Aye. that's a step forward? I think so, mate. I think um, if teams are going to show ambition and the likes of yourselves and um, Darville and um, Oven Meadow and Troon that are going to be going and getting licensed and floodlights and. I think that, that can only be good for these communities as well. Um, I think that if clubs are going to show ambition, and of course, there'll be teams left behind by it, but that was the exact same case in the juniors as it was, and there was teams left behind. But I think that if you're a, a lower league football club and you're showing good ambition and you want to progress as high as you possibly can, because that's something that we drive at Trun. Like, the players, as much as it's good playing with Trun, like, you don't want to be playing with Trun, the, the biggest respect to to Trun, you want to be playing at the best level that you could possibly play at. And I think that there's some big, big clubs in the old junior leagues, um, Pollock, yourselves, do you know what I mean? Good good teams that can go and progress. And you've seen it in the Scottish Cup with the results that you've had, especially your, bo- your boys and Pollock and that. Um, there, there's an opportunity and there's teams at the bottom of the um, Scottish football ladder that have been kind of just playing at it for too long and... Mm-hmm. If there's promotion and relegation, I know that Kelty and Dora get shafted last year, but if there's promotion and relegation, then I think that's the way forward. Hey, Andy Rogers. Oh, that's why. Oh, sorry. On you go. On you go. No, you go, Sean. Do you think the. I keep referring to it as the juniors, but do you think a lot of folk maybe kind of look down in junior football and that for, for higher up? Do you think it'll maybe get a bit more respect now that it's got to be this tier six and. And it'll be a lot more competitive and with a chance of teams going going up higher and, and competing against uh, teams for the low league and, and league two gen, junior football got I keep saying junior football. But I think it'll be a bit more respected. Uh, I think long term, mate. I think long term. I think long term it will um I was guilty of that myself. Do you know what I mean? See when you're playing senior and you looked at junior as it was, you used to think oh, that's a lot of shit. I'm not gonna bother playing there. But uh, when you get down to play there, it's completely different. You know what I mean? It's it's a brilliant level of football and there's reasons that boys play junior there's for, for whatever reason whether it's work wise whether it's anything you know what I mean family anything I think that to do that though that we've got to keep um, attracting the calibre of players that they're attracting this year do you know what I mean and mm-hmm. Darvo spending all the, um, spending a few bit of money in the summer to bring in a really good bunch of players and everyone everyone said their say on them and I, I think you've got to give credit to them they're showing a bit of and they're backing up see if they were just coming and spending whatever money that they've spent on the playing squad and nothing else, then of course there would be people frustrated. But you see what they're doing at their and that, and they're doing up all that. They seem to be doing things the right way, certainly, and that's something that you've always done at June, and we're definitely doing it the right way in, in terms of infrastructure and what we've got. We want to be building, and we want, we want to be ambitious, you know what I mean? I think that you've got to be ambitious as a football club to try and progress. That's what I, I hear folk talking about the money and that, but see if their clubs were in the position where they were fortunate enough for somebody to put money in and, and progress a club forward like what's happening at Darwin, they wouldn't have turned it down, so I don't know why, why there is all just that. Jealousy, about, mate, about just money. jealousy, mate. Ah, yeah. mm-hmm. yeah, we've got a couple of questions for Twitter. Andy Rogers, who you'll know pretty well, Dean, has asked, asked Dean if he knows if kids glove, kid gloves and the grease are still tight. Nice story, man. Um, when we were at L, there was a boy Ryan McWilliams, a goalie, and he came from Morton and really good lad, but a bit thick between the bit between the ears. And we convinced him that he was going to be meeting Big Grecian for a beer in um, George Square, Glasgow. But I think there was about three or four years involved in it. We were texting him and that, so he's turned up at George Square. And we've had to, like Big Grecian. I speak to the big man nearly every day. He's the most 
quietest, straightforward big guy in the world. But we had Ryan McWilliams believing that he was smashing bars up in George Square and chasing <laughs> folk about. Uh, it was it, it made no sound funny, but it was it was a, it was a long running one, and it was um, it was definitely funny. Brilliant. A couple of things on YouTube as well. Please get your questions in on YouTube if you're watching. We've got a, a, quite a few viewers. If you want to get your questions in, we'll ask. We'll answer them. You ask. Uh, Callum at Pipe, bring back Wilson. Uh, good drink, Shankers. <laughs> I'm we're missing him. What a whole need. No, Wilson obviously brings his his own controversy, and that's that's why folk folk enjoy watching it. The, the Adrian Durham of SM Media is, is what yeah, he's been definitely. in portrayed. Definitely. definitely. Lewis Malloy asked, asked Dean any stories about Sean Dillon at Morton. Is that the Sean Dillon that was at the United? No. no. It's a Sean Dillon that get player of the month for Kilmarnock in the SBL. Ah, I don't know how okay. to get seen that one time. Um, no, Sean was brilliant, man. Sean's a Celtic man like myself as well, so we got on really well. And uh, He was my type of player, Sean, to get wired in. And, his, his career didn't go the way that it should have went either, but uh, he's, he's in a green up now coaching and that as well, so they're doing well. Um, him and Tam Malloy, so uh, good yeah. lad, Sean. Brilliant. Uh, we've got a couple of questions as well. Stephen Wilson asked, asked, do you know if he managed, managed to get the spot of blood out of his white plimsolls? That was mad that night. Um, <laughs> see, I, it was after, I can't remember if it was after training or after a game, but we were in the shower, usual carry on in the shower. Somebody was washing their hair, clearly know me, but Somebody was watching the head and they were getting the shower gel put on top, so I ended up the whole cover bit was covered in this soap. So I was like, I'm going to have a big slide. So I ran for one side, uh, one side of the shower room and slid on my feet all the way to the other end. But I'd hit the drain halfway through it and I'd taken a big, massive chunk put my um, the bottom of my foot. So I it was blood pushing everywhere. But thank God it wasn't the, um, a cleansman that I'd done, or else I'd be throwing something, <laughs> in, the chair, throwing something in the couch head. <laughs> Brilliant. Ask Dean if he likes the movie Beetlejuice. Uh, it's my favourite. I've not seen it in ages though. Um, I like to sit and watch that with Kieran. Kieran Mark and Espy, me and him, um, like to sit and watch Beetlejuice together. As well as that, Dean, like, obviously you had, had a really good time at here. What was your, what would you, who would you say was the kind of best manager you worked with? Like Aaron Morton and things like that? Um, I only really worked with Reedy there. Um, Morton, I worked under, it was uh, Big Slim. He'll sort us out with some tickets if you need them for games as well, Big Slim. Uh, Dave McPherson, he was the manager that signed me. Um, and then I think he got sacked a couple of weeks later, surprisingly. Um, and then uh, John McCormack, Cowboy, he was a character, he was wild. I remember Cowboy, it was, we used to be in it training, I think it was nine o'clock where it had been. So we, we were all in the dressing room, maybe about 10 to 9 one morning, and he just come in. And he's like, right, let's go. Who's ha- who's not happy about no playing? Who's not happy with my management? Who's not happy? Let's go. It's 10 to 9. We go start till 9. Let's go for a square go. Offered everybody a square go. <laughs> he was class. What a, what a man he was. He was wild. Um, and then uh, Jimmy Matt. Jimmy was good. Jimmy and Clarkie, they were good with me. And, but I liked talking to big readers. Jimmy, Jimmy got good, to be fair. See, but... Uh, I say it to him and see quarter to three on a Saturday there's been nobody better for me in my full career than Jimmy Jimmy's that just before you get ready to go up he's absolutely brilliant at it phenomenal um, I really enjoyed working with Big Reedy he was, he was different class and still speak to him from time to time as well brilliant has he not Shankers. tried to get you up to Albion Rovers I spoke a few times about things I, but <laughs> I was trying to get him some players last week before I knew that this was going to um, get curtailed happen what do you think as well about the season getting curtailed? Do you do you think he's welcome back and can I finish out the season? I can't see it to be honest. I'll, be, I'll put it back to February the first. Um, I can just see it just getting extended that maybe if March the first, whatever. I, I, I can't see us getting back now um, with the way that the virus has obviously escalated. And um, listen, it's came for the top. That we've got to appreciate that it's came from the government and down to the SFA, and we've just got to accept that whether we agree with it or not. Yeah, That's definitely. what I was going to ask about the the West Scotland League. If you've seen it, if you've seen it finishing, do you think we'd maybe just be better cutting our losses and and try and go again next year, even if it's maybe earlier, start the season earlier? And the uh, I know people will not be going summer holidays and and what no this year. I wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine. Do you think we should maybe try and just cut the losses and maybe start earlier next year? I know there's 
there's a lot of, I think it'll maybe be 38 games or something, but we'll have to try and get through. So if they start early, there's obviously a better chance of that happening as well. I, I completely agree. I think that I think that what, what we should be doing is that as soon as it's um, medically possible for us to be playing football, then we should be playing some sort of football for the uh, teams that we want for the teams that we want to play. And whether that means shortening the league and finishing it, or maybe even some cup competition before the actual league starts, I think that it's important, Shankers, that boys that are allowed to play football, if, if they're allowed by the government to play football, then they should be allowed to play football. There should be some sort of competition there. I know that I'm missing it. I know that I miss it like mad being at the house Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. Do you know what I mean? It's it's also not being able to go out and get to football, that bad camaraderie. And football is the best release for any struggle that I've ever had in life. Do you know what I mean? See, for the two hours that you're there, you're completely not utterly consumed by football. There's nothing else that comes close to it. So I, I hope that it comes back because I'm missing it daily. Shankers, what do you think about Rangers possibly signing the two Preston boys in loan? That's. I've seen uh, is it Daniel Johnson. I've seen Daniel that. Daniel Johnson, sure I think it's Ben Davis. I've seen him play a couple of times. Uh, quite, I quite like that, Daniel Johnson. He's, he's no I bad. Think uh, like, they were linked him in the summer, weren't they? Actually, I've, I've got something wrote down here. I was wondering if Rangers needed to, to add him in this window or whether it would just like disrupt the rhythm that they've, they've got going in. Or do you think they need to add players to freshen it up? I know always adding maybe one or two freshens over it and nothing kind of gets competition for places and that going it, 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 over the last few weeks I feel like there's no run stale but it's just performances just haven't been there to what they were uh, uh, at the start of the season I think they've been sure scraping build. through uh, uh, they've been winning games but no uh, performing if you know what I mean and obviously they, they gave it model on Saturday Nah, I think it's as well. Cool. See when you've got like, see when you've got like, so, like Kent Aribo and like Hadji. I wouldn't say Hadji was off form, but I would say like Kent Aribo just wasn't they you know, getting the going that final final yard to the, the kind of creative bit they've got. But again, I think as as it going as it at the beginning of a blip. I hope I, I hope not because I don't think that Rangers team can afford another blip. You hope again. so. You're you're a, you're a. Uh... No, what I mean is, opinion is what, the host of FM No, what I mean is, is that I hope that, I hope that Rangers, I hope that a, like a result like that doesn't begin their blip. Whereas, like we saw last, I think, Rang- one I think Rangers need a wide man. Do they not? I think they need a wide player. I know that they a wide, play with, a wide right player. I, I know that they play with the three tens as opposed to two at uh, wide, but they definitely need a wide player. And whether they go and get the wee boy Scott Wright for Aberdeen in this window, they add a bit of depth. But see, for me. He would just fall into the same bracket as your Greg Stewart, your Jordan Jones. Boys that are SPL standard, that they're, they're not good enough to step into the team. Do you know what I mean? Ryan Kent knows that he's been poor now for a, a number of months. Every time that I've seen Rangers, Kent's not really been at it. I know that his maybe numbers will be different, but I think that if Rangers are going to go on and secure the title and just bear in mind, if Rangers win the title, they'll get Champions League qualification next year, but they're going to need to be prepared for. So I think that they need to go and strengthen. They need to bring a wide player in. That needs to be a priority for them. I think that they're solid in every other area. They've got good numbers in other areas, but I think they miss an out-and-out wide player. We've got a question from uh, Ryan Harding. Ask Dino if he's managed to take spending money on holidays now. Oh, man, that was wild. Went to, I said that again. We went to Zante, and um, I, I got robbed first night, I think, of this um, young Albanian boy as opposed to a young Albanian woman that I would usually get robbed for on holiday. Um, <laughs> I, I can't I actually remember the story leading up to that, but th- thankfully Big Harry and his mates bailed me out, and I, I'm still doing my night out, so I would big man support. We've got a question for Heather McPike. Who do you think will be relegating the S- SPL? Hamilton. Hamilton are gone. This is the year. Uh, I think it's for the right. Ross County's got a wee bit of momentum with the new yeah, manager yeah, on that. He, he seems to get him. He seems to have them playing well, and he seems like somebody that uh, they would run through a brick wall for. That the way he speaks in interviews and stuff like that, it just seems that like everybody would want to want to play for him. Uh, and in the style of football, he likes to play, get the ball in, and, and try and play football. I think, I think Ross County will be safe. I think Hamilton could go. Yeah, there's a question here as well. How important has Rangers two goalkeepers been to their season, and do you think they would be at the same position if it wasn't for them? Uh, they wouldn't have won the old firm game if it wasn't for Alan McGregor. So, 
But John, I, I mean, when John McLaughlin was signed, I was very, very impressed with that signing because it was somebody that could potentially in a year's time be the number one if McGregor decides to, to hang up. But he came in and didn't look out of place when he, he came in at the start of the season. So I think that's that, always a good thing to have a, a good number yeah. two, I suppose. I think when you look across me. when you look across the yeah. city in terms of goalkeeping, I think it shows you just how important it is. Celtics had three three goalies this year, and none of them have been up to standards. I think McGregor's been phenomenal, and having him behind you, and, and I know that McLaughlin's been a good backup as well in games. And I think Scott makes a great point. If McGregor's going to be in the next year or two, then McLaughlin's a very very good goalie. Well, you've got he's a Scottish international as well. I'm just looking at the Celtic bench as well. It's, be, it's beginning to look like it's possibly Edward that's the, the second player. I'm not obviously making assumptions, but he's not on the bench. And I, would, I, would just, I think he had know. COVID before, Scott. I don't know if I don't know the situation. No. In Cham, maybe it could be in Cham. Maybe he's carrying an injury, but Odson Edward isn't in the squad for today's game. You wouldn't think he would, he would be left out. And I don't know how what their training situation and that would have been the past 10 days I'd imagine they would have done some sort of programme or whatever but you wouldn't think he would be left out in an almost must win game the, the thing I look at as well he's French and uh, so is Julian so I think, so I think can, him and Cham I think Edward and Cham share a flat I might be wrong but I'm sure I've heard that before uh, they two share a flat so if one of them's tested positive I would assume the other one's to isolate but again it doesn't it do, do you get do you give Lennon a bit of sympathy because he's never really had a been able to call on his best team at any point, has he? I wouldn't give him any sympathy, mate, to be honest. I don't think he deserves any sympathy. I think he's been selecting it. And this was the, the, the writing was on the wall early doors for Celtic this year. The football's not been good enough since we beat Hamilton, I think, was it 5 6 0 or something, the first game of the season. And then since then, it's, it's been absolute draws. It's been dreadful. And, and I know that it looks bad sometimes with the protests and that. But, what you might do, you know what I mean? You can't get in the stadium to vent the frustration during the game. Um, I think that that makes it a lot worse. Guys like Duffy's performances and see the old firm game at Parkhead, the Celtic Rangers game at Parkhead. Um, Celtic were passing the ball but at the back, 2-0 down with 10 minutes to go. There'd be fans on the pitch mm-hmm. if there was people out there. <laughs> um, so I have to say that's maybe a, you think that's maybe a, a reason though because there's no fans there that they're, they're not playing to form? To me, it looks, Scott, that under Brendan Rodgers, Celtic, Celtic get taken to a different level. Um, I think it was on them all the time, the, the training-wise, they look well-coached, well-drilled. And for me, Lennon, and I, I don't, I, I'm no privy to any of this, this is just my opinion, it might be absolute nonsense, but Lennon looks the type that if, as long as you do a job on a Saturday for me, then that's all that matters. And I think modern-day football has changed a wee bit that way. And I think that the signs were on the uh, signs were early doors when Ball and Goalie went away to Spain after four days off, like they'd four days off, what three, four weeks into the season. Um, it was bizarre, bizarre stuff. Um, and I uh, so I think that Lennon's gonna brought a lot of it on his own. Uh, he's got the board have got to carry the blame. Like, when, when Brendan Rodgers left, Celtic should have went for somebody as opposed to Neil Lennon. Do you know what I mean? Fair enough, stop that to get them through to win the to win the cup in the league at that season. Fair enough, right? But to, to be the Celtic manager, you've got to have earned, right? And unfortunately, after he left the first time and went to Hibs and Bolton, Tibbs team not playing well. They played play good football, but it ended in absolute carnage there as well. Do you know what I mean? When he gets sacked. And I, I just think that Celtic, Celtic made an arse when they appointed them, but now they've made the rod for their own back. And I think there's a bit of arrogance there. I think I'll agree with Andy, uh, Andy Walker and that. There is a bit of arrogance there coming through the top all the way down. Scott, see when you said about Lennon not having his best team available, do you do you think he even knows what his best team is? No, nah, there's nah. been so many nah, formations. I think that proves tonight. And, Greg and, Taylor's playing and, uh, players. Uh, like there's been so many experiments. Is is maybe the word for it? Uh, uh, trying to. Get, it looks at this time like the diamond. Obviously, it worked really well at, at Ibrox, but it shouldn't take you to this time of the, of the season to to find your best kind of. Uh, formation and players and, and uh, what no? Do you know what I would say? Like obviously tonight, like as I, as I say, Greg Taylor starting instead of Lax out. Like Greg, uh, you, you feel a bit for Greg Taylor because again, if you, if you if you ask Wilson, like Wilson raves about Greg Taylor. I've never I've never I'm been impressed with Lax out. Aye, but I've never been impressed with Lax out. 
never, I, I've never. Greg understood. Taylor's not. He's not. He's not easy on the eye. Greg Taylor is. He? I mean, he's. He's came for Kilmarnock and he's a six and a half out of ten every week. Do you know what I mean? But I think the problem is, is that we went for Kieran Tierney, Celtic to now having Greg Taylor and Lax out. Uh, when in reality, how, how can you kind of stay up to that standard? You know crazy. I mean? And the thing that's frustrating is, as you look at the Leicester game last night, I watched Leicester last night and Castagna at right back and Justin at left back. Celtic were linked to pay for them. Exactly. Only Brendan Rodgers was the manager and just refused to pay the money for them. So. Well, that, that, Aye, leads it's next, that leads me to my next question. Last night, I thought as well, that was very interesting. When kind of Brent, we see the kind of rise of Brendan Rodgers. See if you go for an Eddie Howe. Do you think Eddie Howe can can go in? If, if Eddie Howe's the top man, if the man they want, we don't know. Going with the bookmakers, it suggests he is. Is Eddie Howe going to come up here and be the Brendan Rodgers that, that Celtic need? I think that they've got to go and target someone like Eddie Howe. Um, I've seen a thing on Twitter about the comparison between Eddie Howe and Rodgers before they took the Celtic job and it was quite similar but I think Celtic's got a massive the thing is that for me I think that the change needs to happen now because there's a six month job there just sorting out the mess that's left there's about 15-20 players it's going to be a turnaround in 15-20 players at Celtic this summer yeah. um, I think for them and as a football club obviously me as a fan I'm never going to give up the hope that we can turn this season round somehow, but as them as a club, they should be preparing for next year already, trying to get rid of some of the players that they're playing because some of them are only good enough to beat Celtic. And do you think Eddie Howe as well has got the... Oh, sorry, only Do you think Eddie Howe has got the big, big mentality? Like that, the, the thing I've noticed about Eddie Howe is, and I don't know if that's... He's never been tested in like a big a big stage. Brendan Rodgers had just came for Liverpool. Didn't do it well towards the end of Liverpool, but he came within a whisker of winning the league. Steven Gerrard as well, being at a big club, knows the knows how big a club like Celtic are. Is is Eddie Howe going to do that? Going to be able to take get that straight away kind of thing? The way that the likes of Martin O'Neill got it, like Brendan Rodgers got it. I think, I think Gerrard. It's going, going to be hard for Celtic. It's going to be it's going to be really hard for Celtic to try and bring in somebody of Brendan Rodgers' caliber. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? We got really lucky when we got Brendan Rodgers at the timing of it. He just left Liverpool, obviously. Um, there's no many managers available like Brendan Rodgers that are going to be coming to Celtic. Yeah. Um, if you want to be ambitious, you could look at the boys at Ragnick, Ralph Ragnick, that was at yeah, Leipzig. Leipzig. This is the kind of calibre of manager that I think that Celtic should be trying to attract. Um, but whether they get them or not, I think there's got to be a fine line between going for... Because Jack Ross's name is one that will be mentioned. Do you know what I mean? As soon as... Uh, and I think you've got to find a line between aiming for Brendan Rodgers and getting Jack Ross, I think there's got to be somewhere in between. And that's not a bad thing on Jack Ross, I think, that maybe potentially further down the line he could manage Celtic, but he's not got the experience to now for me. And I think that Celtic have got to go and aim high. And Gerard was different, wasn't he? Because Gerard came in he had two, three years. This has been a build-up the last two, three Aye. years with Gerard. It's not as if he's came with that immediate demand that he needs to win that league. Because if that was the case, then he would have been gone two, two years ago or gone last year. Um, so Celtic's next manager needs to be a manager that's going to come in and win now. Um, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. Actually, I've got some. See, just see when you're saying about the six month. It's a six month job just to get all this sorted. Do you think it's a possibility? I know you said just said you'll never say the league's done until it's done, basically. But do you think it's a it's a possibility that Celtic could? I know a possibility, but do you think it would be an idea to cash in the, their prized assets, as they say, uh, in this window and bring in a new manager, give them some sort of budget to, to implement his own style of play or whatever within the six months to get ready for for the for the future, for whoever, whether it may be Eddie Howe or whatever. I don't think if they sell all the players, I don't think they'll get that the money that's sold all flung back into transfer. I think it'll be whether they got half it or whatever, but do you think that that's an option to to get rid of Lennon now? Maybe sell. I know. I don't think they would sell the players because obviously then that's almost admitting defeat. But do you think that could be an option to to get rid of some players, get the man a new manager in, and and give him the the rest of the season to try and get his own marker done. Stampy's authority. I think they could get rid of some. I think they could get rid of some players, mate. To be honest, I think that they like saying Cam. In Chama, I think he's a terrific mm-hmm. player, but he's in and out of the team, so they could get rid of him. 
he could cut El Yunusi's loan deal short, he could send Duffy back, he could cut these loans. There's, much, there's, there's definitely deals that he can done. But the, the big one's Edward, isn't it? If you sell Edward, you're admitting that the season's over. Uh, um, so I don't think that they can sell him at all. But it would take a hell of a manager to come in and convince the Celtic support, I think, that we've got to start planning for next year. I think that that would be absolute madness to say that. But see if, we, see if was, as well as we think that if there's a new manager coming in at the end of the season, is he going to be the, in the same position of not being able to buy his own players? And then that will put a lot of managers off. I think there's got to be change at Celtic. They need to employ a sporting director. They need to, there needs to be a, a, a change in approach, obviously. It was well documented in the summer that Stephen Fletcher deal, that Neil Lennon wanted Stephen Fletcher and Peter Law didn't want him and that's how the deal never happened. And that came back to beat them in the arms. So I think that there's got to be a change at a role at Celtic. I think most modern day football clubs have got to go that way now that there's got to be a go between between the manager and like I say, whether it's a sporting director or whatever whatever term that they want to come. I think that Celtic's got to change. I hierarchy's got to change because you can't have Peter Law making decisions because He's proven in the last 18 months that the decisions that he makes no good enough. Yeah, definitely. If you've got that guy, person, Nicky Hammond's get caught a wee bit of drink, he's like avoided some some slack that could possibly come his way because of recruitment and that drink. Because his name's not really been mentioned with, with I know, protest laws, the chief exec and, and Lennon's a manager, so they're, they're out there on the firing line. But he, he's obviously the man that's head of recruitment or whatever he is and, and he's not really been mentioned for taking any stick it's obviously has been, been some of his signings as well I, I, I just think that the, the box should always stop with the manager in terms of signings well now mm-hmm. at the Celtics you know what I mean but clearly there's been signings made that that aren't good enough I so I, absolutely Shankers Nicky Hammond's got to come into that and like I say there's got to be a change Celtic needs ripped up there's been it's been coming for a while now it needs ripped up and changed. In the, uh, it needs to be done now, I think. I don't think they can wait until the summer because in the summer, you've got two Champions League spots available this year. So Celtic, yeah. Celtic need to be focused on getting that Champions League money next year as well. They need to be starting to prepare for that, mm-hmm. I think, anyway. Definitely. Carl McPike asked, when is Shankers getting a trim like Dino? <laughs> I had one in lockdown. Uh, I had one at the start of lockdown. So I decided to shave my hair off because I wasn't getting to a barber and it's getting that way now. It's getting to that stage. I need to either uh, get a skinhead or just keep it going. And I, I said I was going to grow my hair until I scored a goal again and then we proved it to the league. So that kind of backfired a wee bit. Uh, Alison says she'll divorce me if I get a skinhead again. So I'll have to keep it going. Somebody's posted that and Cham is the latest player and Edwards is flatmate. Mm-hmm. I know you you said that, but that, that seems to be what it what it is. But but that'll that'll mean they'll both be both be for another ten days, which which obviously isn't mm-hmm. good and it, it all backfires. Now I go back to a question for you, Shankers, as well. What's your all time five aside team when you were at air? I think who I played with in my fifteen appearances. And then you can do a Talbot. Yeah, you can do a Talbot one. I think a Talbot one would be there. <laughs> uh, uh, goalkeeper. I never really, I never played with him, but when I was in there in the squad training, see Kevin Cuthbert, what a goalkeeper he was. Uh, I never made any appearances with him. I don't know if that counts. Uh, oh, Try to think of goal, goalies when I was there. Uh, Graham Smith, he he was he was no bad. Uh, no, I think there's two Graham Smiths to be here that are goalkeepers. The one the one as well. I'll I'll chuck uh, Kevin Cuthbert in, even though I only kind of trained with him. Uh, Scott McLaughlin, he he's gonna two footed, perfect for five asides. Um, I'll go. Robbie Crawford. And Alan Forrest, they, they two can play in the middle. Two good players for five aside. And I'll go Moff. Moff up top. Good right. to be Moff there. Aye. I think that. I think that well, it was Moff or Kevin Moff, Kyle. Man. So it, went, it was Moff or Kevin Kyle, so it wasn't there. <laughs> a debate. <laughs> was Kevin Kyle good when you, spent, when you, when you were at Aaron? 
I think he's he spoke his cell. He 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 never he what we were talking about earlier when people looked down in the juniors. He almost looked down in, in part time football like that because he's been full time all his days basically. So he's coming in. Know that he's not really caring, but you almost kind of get that off him. He's he almost knows he's coming in. He's going to be done at the end of the season. Coming in, uh, playing a few games, he knows he's not enjoying it and that. So he probably he's he's said before he he couldn't know that he couldn't really be asked, but it was it was something kind of along the lines. So he he wasn't really bothered to be honest. And I can still can get a game for him, so that doesn't really say all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, pick your Talbot five a side team. I think I know three of these. I think three of these are obvious. Talbot five or three. That's a hard one. I've been... A lot of good players. Well, one goal is a goalie. Nah, goal is obvious, I <laughs> um, I think I would go... Play of Whitey. Whitey, go to Bernard. <laughs> Not five asides. You should come and see your five asides at training. Um, Mark McGoldrick. I think I would top him in it. Goldie? Uh, Goldie, aye. I think I would top him in it. Um, that's a tough one. I play. I think Gareth Armstrong would be good but, at fives. Aye, uh, he would be class at fives. He he just plays the game with, with a cigar in his mouth. He doesn't <laughs> break sweat ever. So composed on the ball, brilliant. Graham, uh, Graham Wilson, Wilson, I'll stick. I'll Graham stick him up. Um, so that leaves two, two. Butch, chuck Butch in there, and. Probably. Only. Oh, aye, man. Oh, you've just chucked that in the mix. I nearly said Spenny there. Gormley, aye. Spenny could I'll play go, too. I'll go um, Andy, Leishman, Goldie. I'll go Butch. And Gormley. And uh, you can't really heed on five sides. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Butch and Gormley and Graham Wilson they can just roam about G, and G kind of got a red card because you, you don't got for, for elbows at, in five side either so he would be staying on the floor Brilliant we're going to we're going to just ask predictions for the Celtic game tonight and then we'll be we'll take a, if there's any more if there's any more questions please put them in the, the live chat we'll answer a few more hopefully before we before we wrap up Dean what do you think tonight what do you <laughs> I think it'll be a comfortable win. Is it must win? Uh, every game's must win minute when you're Celtic in it, but uh, especially especially given the circumstances, uh, uh, hopefully a comfortable win for Celtic. Um, hopefully some good performances. I want to see better from Pong. If he's playing, I want to see better for him. I think his final ball has been dreadful. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, see the thing is, he gets into brilliant aye. positions, to like crossing positions, man. It, see just that final ball. I get uh, against Rangers at Ibrox. See the positions they get into. It was brilliant, and then he just it's just the end product. Hang on, so Shankers if he had a final product, then he wouldn't beat Celtic. Do you know what I mean? Aye, aye, that's that's the hang on it. That's, 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 that's the reason he's at Celtic. But uh, I think hopefully a comfortable win, and hopefully Griffiths in amongst the goals coming back. Um, for obviously back in the team leading the line tonight. So Shankers for Jank, Jank, this could be the time Celtic bounce she, back. She just quit. Is there anybody in the team that that played? Um, Played the last two games. Tumble, Duffy, Duffy, Duffy Beaton, Duffy Beaton, and Tumble. I think. So four, McGregor. Right. See, it's a tough one. You can, you can look at it two ways. You can look at it the fresh and the kind of ready to go, and then you can look at it. They've no had, they've no had uh, like a week's training or whatever to prepare for it. But as I say, as I say, I think uh, Livingston have a, an eye in the weekend. I think Celtic won. Two now, I'm gonna go for. You know what the last two games showed to me is that Celtic don't have a don't have as good a youth system as they used to. See, like the last two games, and they don't like say how many good players have Celtic brought through, like so, like Tierney, McGee, Maloney, and that they don't have that player now, and they don't. Is that is there maybe an issue with the youth? System? I, I, I think there's uh, that's a lot of teams' youth systems. How many you don't see a Maloney or a. A McGeady coming through for not just Celtic, but even Rangers are, are a lot of teams in the country. How many 
players like that are coming Would, through. Do you think that is China playing... poker playing less? No, because there's no reserve football. Ah, yeah, that's what I uh, think. Football's just different nowadays, isn't it? See, see, Gordon's playing on a, on a twenty. I mean, there's an English football got under twenty threes. See, if you're mm, twenty two year old and, and you're not playing, I mean, I'm I'm not one to talk. But see, if you're twenty two years old and you're playing in a under twenty threes match, and you you'd be better going to League Two and playing for a, a Cheltenham or whatever than than what you would. You'd get more benefit out of that than what you would playing in a on a 23s game in front of any crowd or whatever. Definitely. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's too easy for them at Celtic. I, I, obviously, Michael Johnston, he was the one that was going to be coming through, wasn't he? And he's been kind of curtailed a wee bit of the injury. But the likes of the boy Welch at the back, the one that sticks out for me is Tony Ralston. He must be he must be 21, 22 now mm-hmm. and still at Celtic. When, when's he going to have a bit of ambition and go and try and play somewhere else? I mean, he played the other day there. And the fact that he's still at Celtic, it shows you that everything that's wrong. I think he's coming away two, three years ago. It was clearly no good enough two, three years ago and I don't know why he's still there to be fair. Yeah, definitely. I've got a question for Shea Guevara. I don't imagine it's a real Shea Guevara. Did Dino enjoy staying with me when he got packed out of the house by his ma? <laughs> that's that, Scotty that, in the that, that was Scotty. Is it? No, uh, that's what I was going to say. That's Scotty. <laughs> it was brilliant, man. I used to stay at Scotty's on a Thursday night team. We used to, well, I don't know if you was, maybe don't mind this, too young. But we used to watch us sing, um, it was Callum, Callum Best, Fran Healy, and uh, Paul Denan. They did this Callum, Fran, and Dangerous Denan program. It was <laughs> brilliant, man. We used to watch that every Thursday. Paul Denan is the best celebrity in the history of live television. He's an absolute wizard. Brilliant. But Scotty needs to get an hour, a couple of questions in because he's usually got Arnold's. But he's answered that. He's asked a good few. Just a, another last thing as well. I just want to get your thoughts in the the junior leagues. Do you see if the league starts up again? Dean, do you fancy Trun to, to do pretty well in it? Started well. We had a really good start. Um, the disappointing thing for us is that our last game was we beat off Arvo, do you know what I mean? So we've not had a chance to you know, rectify that. We didn't play well on the day and Arvo took their chances. They were they were well well worth the winners. Um, but we were up there, do you know, we were playing Clyde Bank and if we played Clyde Bank we were going to go joint top with them. So but Clyde Bank had a terrific start to the season as well and Gordon Moffat, he's done a great job up there. But I, I think that the squad of players that we've, we've managed to recruit, the, the club have been absolutely phenomenal and managed to recruit a really good squad of players there. And I would have been confident if, if we can get back or if the season wasn't curtailed that towards the end of the season we would have been up there. Ah, absolutely. Definitely. See, see if it does go back, do you think it's realistic that, that it can finish? No. I don't think so. I think they'll need to come up with something. There's no way that teams at our level can play. Well, we've shown for a small period of time in the summer that you can play three, four times a week. But I just think that there's far too many games to get crammed in. And I think that I, I think it'd be ambitious to try and fit them in. I think that we've still got about twenty odd games to play minimum. So. I see. It's, it's kind of unrealistic for this time of the year anyway. Shank, because a few boys can back for. You. Talking like for for loan spells is there is there a reason for that? Are they potentially going back out in loan? Do you know what's going on there? Uh, I think their loans were till the end of this month anyway because right. there there is well I don't know how it will be now but there was hope that they were going to play at the Junior Scottish Cup for last season. That was well we're still at the quarter final stage. We're the last quarter final to play against Hurlford, so there was. There was hope that, that that was going to get finished. So I think the loan spells were up to the end of January so as they could come back and then obviously play on that. But I, I don't know how, how that's going to play out now. Uh, Ankles, she just owned that. She just owned that, if you don't mind me asking a question, Scott. What's your, thoughts on, what's your thoughts on Ocken Lake Talbot and all that going to compete in this year, well, last year's um, Scottish Cup, given the fact that they pulled out the leagues based on health and safety reasons? I, uh, it's it's a hard one. It's I don't know. It's it, I I honestly don't really can what what to make it to be honest because obviously we put out the league. Uh, uh, in my opinion, I I was one of the players. I'll tell you the I was one of the players that, that says that I, I didn't want to. I I didn't think the season should go ahead, right? But the the majority of the squad wanted to play, so if. If we went with the majority of the squad, we 
and we play. I wouldn't have just went, all right, I'm chucking it, I'm not playing. I would have went with the decision because that's how, that's how our vote works. Mm. But uh, it's strange. I don't know whether the... I, I don't suppose they would be made to play it because it was last year's competition. I, I presume it would be up to themselves. And I don't know. It, it doesn't look good, put it that way, if, if you pull out a comp, pull out the league competition and then go and fulfil the last year's comp, uh, junior Scottish Cup. I know it's only, well, it's one game they know and then possibly the uh, two semi-finals and then a final if you're lucky to get there. So it's a maximum of four games. I don't know if they look at it that way. Can it's, It could... At the most, it's four games. At least it's it's one. I don't know if they look at it that way, but in my opinion, it doesn't really look good putting it uh, in the league and then and then going into playing that as well uh, for the outsider's point of view. Saying nothing. Brilliant. That will wrap us up for for this episode, Dean. It's been an absolute pleasure to be on me. I hope you've enjoyed it. I really have enjoyed it, mate. It's been brilliant. Scott, cheers for having his own shankers. It's great to see you, pal. Aye, good. Good to see you, mate. We'll be, we'll be back as well with a flagship on the uh, Sunday with an announcement of who our guests are going to be. But thanks very much, boys, for coming on. I really enjoyed it. And thanks very much to everyone who tuned in and asked a question. Tune in to our next live show. Thanks very much, everyone. Cheers. 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 It was good. Enjoy that. <laughs>